Sweet. So um, thanks, guys, for entertaining me with that. Um, so what is a millennial Arab? Does anyone know any ideas? Figure. For sure, for sure. But that is just to the, the tip of the iceberg, right? So I'm going to help you a little bit on a journey and, and using my own journey to help um, bridge a gap that I think needs um, is, is, is more, like the world is focusing on today more than ever before. So my name is Fahad Al Saud. I uh, was born and raised in Saudi Arabia. Um, I was uh, uh, raised in, in, in one of the best cities in Saudi, Jeddah, which is a, which is, um, a coast, um, which is on the coast of the Red Sea. It's, uh, uh, I grew up with fashion, I grew up with uh, art, I grew up with, um, uh, in a melting pot of different ethnicities, races, religions. Uh, and yes, in Saudi Arabia. I grew up in an ecosystem that was filled with kindness, but at the same time, that ecosystem that I knew and loved was described for the longest time as an axis of evil. So, just kind of to kind of put things in perspective, um, Saudi Arabia and the Arab world, we have our own Uber, we have Kareem, uh, we have our own Amazon, uh, Souq, which means market, and we have our own Marvel, and it's called Nam. Um, left Saudi when I was 17, ended up at Stanford, uh, being the first Saudi undergrad from Stanford. There was a huge responsibility, and, and, and it was really a shocking experience to really be faced post 9-11, being in a community, in a, in a global part of the world where you're being demonized, and having been lucky enough to be in a liberal environment that allowed me to grow and to also fine and to be able to look back at the inconsistencies of how uh, my people and my region has been perceived. So today, I am sitting on an intersection of youth, tech, and storytelling. A lot of my work is focused on giving women a platform and an opportunity to really do what they do best, at least when it comes to Saudi women. They're the strongest I've ever experienced. Um, I do this not because I'm trying to you know, fulfill some kind of weird, self-serving, uh, uh, narcissistic, egotistical approach of wanting to do what everybody else and jump on the help wagon. I do this because it is important to understand that if you come from privilege, especially in a male-dominated society, it is the responsibility of every male member of that community to stand along their sisters and their mothers and their daughters and their cousins and bring everybody together because we can't wait for them to do it alone. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted to also talk about uh, my experience um, and influence and, and, and being influenced by art, by fashion, by, by pop culture, global pop culture. I grew up listening to Rammstein, which is really interesting because my counterparts in America have never heard of it when I went there. Um, and this, again, is an uh, you know, amalgamation, and I feel like I've been privileged enough to encompass and be uh, a, a proud ambassador of Vision 2030, which is a movement coming from the next generation of power in Saudi, uh, led by the Crown Prince Mohammed uh, bin Salman, who is only 33 years old. And that vision is about 
taking advantage of this untapped resource, uh, which is human resource, uh, within the Arab world, Saudi Arabia, and sharing and building different channels where we can kind of introduce ourselves and reintroduce ourselves as global citizens. Before I, I continue, I want to take an opportunity to thank TOA and uh, Nico, and specifically Berlin. Berlin, ah, Berlin. We, can, we all have a story about Berlin. Um, it's, I wanted to come here, I came here five years ago for the, I think it was the second uh, open air to see my friend Maddie speak. Um, and in this experience, I was exposed to this unbelievable, untapped resource of uh, problem solvers. These creative problem solvers are coming from all over the world, from all over Europe, from all over, uh, uh, even Berlin has different backgrounds, are coming in and are creating this ecosystem that I felt had uh, uh, truly an opportunity to solve a problem that the world is facing, that I'm facing. Um, I didn't really choose Berlin, Berlin chose me. Uh, Germany took a position of openness, and we heard it, and we're here. Uh, the concept of building bridges, that's in the past. The bridges have already been, uh, been built, and we're on them right now. The the, what I want to talk about is what are we going to do with these bridges? and how are we going to move forward. Um, and that's important through reintroducing a region that has been misrepresented for generations. After Stanford, I got lucky enough to get an opportunity to work with Facebook. Um, through my work at Facebook, I helped launch it in Arabic. Um, and that really was inspired, again, by women. Women were the 1% of women in the Arab world, and specifically in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia, were utilizing this platform to really bypass the, the male-dominated uh, environments that they were in. A lot of the movement restrictions that were uh, getting in the way of their personal progress were completely erased with technology and with a social platform. When brought, when brought to my team, that basically was the catalyst to introducing Facebook in Arabic, because the assumption of what the 1% can do this, what about the 99% who don't speak English but speak Arabic? So let's localize and introduce. Following that experience uh, and understanding that the, that's just that's the, the half of the bridge has been built, I need to go back home and meet them halfway. So when I went back home, I recognized that the Saudi that I left was different than the Saudi that I'm coming back to. So in the age of alternative facts, I decided let's share some real facts. Um, Saudi is 23 million people. MENA, Middle East, North Africa, is approximately two or 320 million people. Arabic is the fifth language. Um, uh, uh, globally, uh, by number of native speakers. Islam is the number one and fastest growing religion around the world. But with all this, and more than 250 million um, Arabs uh, and Arab speakers, the, the, our content and our identity represents less than 1% online. Two thirds of my country in the Arab region are under the age of 30. So, we're talking about half of the countries between the ages of 15 to 29. We have 200 million relatable, content-starved Arab youth today, where mobile subscription is 95%. So how does this all shape us and our vision of what a millennial uh, Arab is? What we're understanding is we have resources, we are connected, we've been part of this journey from the very get-go. We've been uh, 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 contributors to the global community, but we have not been heard. Um, so what, I, what I'm trying to get to here is that a millennial Middle East is basically unstoppable. And it is the future, and of this youth, uh, and this generation, that is more valuable than any other resource that we can find in the ground. So, as a patron and perhaps uh, uh, perceived antagonist, it's my mission to, uh, since graduating, whether it's getting involved with NAM, whether it's getting involved with Facebook, whether it's get starting the first startup uh, weekend in Saudi Arabia, which then burst the whole uh, uh, entrepreneurial movement that happened in Saudi right after the Arab Spring, and now Vision 2030. There are many solutions that are being, pr that are being presented right now, and that, at the time, considered revolutionary, but today, have led to a quantum change across the country. So, 
we are also the world. The, fact is, uh, the facts I just presented help us to understand that all these uh, uh, opportunities within young people in the region, uh, the, 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 the looking at their capabilities, looking at what they can contribute, um, is something that is extremely important. So how do, how do we get tap into that potential? How can we build and how can we take a, a, a marginalized people who have so many resources, who are highly educated, who I think collectively make up a huge part of the global population, how do we take that into the next level? Well, it's very simple, guys. It's very simple. Just simply invest in their future. And that comes in form of structural changes to, to economic policies, to political policies, social, social spheres, and uh, uh, through togetherness and friendship. I think um, what I'm trying to get to is by empowering the youth of Saudi Arabia, you're empowering the world. To enter and utilize a new, um, to enter and utilize a new world that hasn't been tapped into before. One, one that is led by tech, um, and, and, and art with a, with a globally interconnected economy. This is, is, is this, these are all, you know, a bunch of big words, right? So how do we put it into practice? That came to life actually through the Vision 2030 a, a decision to introduce Comic-Con to Saudi Arabia. Go figure. Women can't drive, but we can do cosplay. Um, that became the first historic uh, 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 um, mixed event in Saudi history. Um, they chose art, they chose entertainment to usher this new age of progress where 35,000 people, men and women of all ages, were in the same room together, some veiled, some not. And if you need proof, just go online and you'll see a lot of pictures. Um, this really inspired this movement and this opportunity and wanting to redefine who we are and reintroduce our identity inspired a, a, a something as simple as a superhero. Narrative and identity is super important. We see content both saving lives, but right now, in our own backyard, we see it killing them and ending lives. People live in fear because of what is being perceived. So Latifa was born as a symbol, as an opportunity to build uh, uh, the first step towards reintroducing and reclaiming our identity, using the most marginalized, uh, uh, I guess, character, which is the Arab woman, globally. Um, the biggest targets of, uh, of, of racism, the biggest targets of attacks, the biggest targets of, of, of terror, terrorism, truly, is the Arab woman. So, but the, the, the strongest, uh, uh, you know, person that I've experienced in my life was the Arab woman, so that didn't really connect, so Latifa was born. And I guess, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do here is to really help people understand that these conversations are, are of, of bridging gaps, and we've been talking about it for a year, but sometimes we don't recognize that we've, we've actually achieved something that, that we've been striving for for such a long time. And I think here in Germany, here in this ecosystem, and why Naam is present and why I'm here, is there is, you can't deny that the infusion of Arab and European is now forever. And by, and uh, the, the programs that exist here allow us to showcase who we are. That's, it's no surprise that the biggest, uh, uh, um, success stories that came out of this shift and this global shift have been in the arts, whether it was a ballet dancer, whether it was the or orchestra in Denmark, which brings us back, back to what is, here, what is important to understand. Is that what you have done already and what we have done already is, as an Arab millennial, it is, it is not just the concept of being a millennial. We, we need your support and we need to, to really have a conversation and understand that uh, what makes us different and why I have to come and introduce a, an Arab millennial is we face things that a regular millennial around the world wouldn't face, and that is a continuous need to explain the many selves that we are, the continuous need to be interrogated and have to explain our validity and, our, and, and why we should exist. And why we should exist is because we're freaking awesome. 
We're freaking awesome. You guys, everybody here has at least one Arab friend. If you don't, I don't know where you're living because we're in every country. This is an opportunity for us to really, um, to really step it up and be proud of what we've achieved. We've solved a problem, guys. And now we just need your help, and I need your help, to take it to the next level and really take this to the rest of the world. And I'm going to leave it up for questions. If anybody has any questions, please, nothing is off limits, off topic, except this jacket, which is really Thanks awesome. So <laughs> I'm like sweating. Cool. Um, so we have a, a slido.com if anyone would like to grab out their phones and write down a question. Or we have the catch box if anyone wants to throw up their hand right now and ask a question. Anyone have questions? Guys. Okay. I'll ask a question then. Yeah. It can uh, be about my shoes. It's fine. I can answer anything. So <laughs> what, what keeps pulling you back to Berlin? Can you build up our ego a little bit and, you know? Well, when, when being... being um, it's honestly the, the place where I feel the most safe. Um, honestly, it's, the, it's a place where I feel welcomed on the street. It's a place where I don't feel like I need to look over my shoulder. It's a place where I can look in, next to me and see a veiled woman and a woman who's not veiled walking down and completely could not give two shits about each other. And for me, coming from an environments where I've always had to justify why I'm in the room, regardless of perceived privileges, um, where I've been interrogated on uh, and my, my, whether I should be even alive, to be in an ecosystem that welcomes me and helps me and gives me opportunities to grow and people like me to grow, is, 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 uh, that's the, uh, I just found a unicorn. Oh, nice. Thank you, Greg. And that's Bergheim. Great. So I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <All right>. guys. <laughs> so we'll see you at Sunday at church then. That's yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions in the crowd? Uh, no? Okay, big round. Oh, we've got one down here. Where's our catch box going? Go for it. The microphone is coming. Just hold it right to your face so we can hear it. <laughs> so what's like the five, ten year plan? Oh, Good question. Global dominance, right? Uh, the five, year, ten year plan is to, uh, uh, one, build the proper distribution uh, 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 model for uh, the, the Arab diaspora. So the best thing about being Arab is that we are a culture and not a race. We are white, we are green, we are atheists, we are Muslim, we are in every single country, we are dispersed all over the world. We are third, fourth generation Brazilian, third, fourth generation uh, uh, German. And uh, we have, uh, you know, what we're trying to build is, 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 a, is a global movement and a renaissance that will maintain and be the stepping stone for further creation of art, for further creation of storytelling. We're, we want to build empires. We want to build new ecosystems for collaboration, new microeconomies and exchanges between communities and cultures that have never spoken before. Um, you, know, com you know, commerce and culture are, are forever interconnected. But doing it the right way, where, where it actually adds positive impact continuously, and that's simply in job creation. If we just look at the numbers that we have, um, we're gonna be, if, these, if these kids don't get jobs soon, it's gonna be a very difficult next 30, 40 years for us. And for me, this is a stepping stone, because what people don't understand, when I talk about my personal work within, which was within the animation space, that may seem frivolous to some. We don't have theaters where I come from. Um, if this doesn't exist, kids don't have an opportunity to do anything, you know? And we can't be filming videos and doing studios from our backyard or our homes anymore. Uh, so what we're doing is not just starting a company, we're building an industry that, as many have seen, whether it's, you know, Bollywood, Nollywood in Nigeria, whether it is Hollywood in the US, it's been, you know, it's a hundred year old, if not more, industry and has sustained millions and millions of people. And that's exactly what the long term goal is, is just continuing that mission. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. Big round of applause. Thank you so much.